Hi guys, my name is Kirsty and welcome back to Upside Down Books and today we're going to be talking about my new favourite thing, which is How to Train Your Dragon. If you watch my wrap up video then you're probably aware that I have just been like powering through How to Train Your Dragon in a relatively obsessed manner and I'm pleased to say that I have now finished all 12 books, which is upside down, I'm sorry, oh god, in, in the How to Train Your Dragon series and it was fabulous. So like the really short version of this video is yes you should read this even if you are also no longer 12 years old because it's worth it. But the longer version is the rest of this video. This was truly a fabulous experience. So I have always been interested in reading these books. And I'm 26 years old now and something I've talked about before is the fact that I didn't read as a kid. I used to hate reading as a kid. It just it took it was so hard, it took so much effort. I think reading was just a skill that took me a while to develop. And it wasn't until I was in high school, so when I was around 14 or 15 years old, that I really started reading books. Which means I missed out on a lot of things like How to Train Your Dragon. And so lately I've become intense in, increasingly interested in revisiting these series because many of them are still enjoyable to read as an adult. And I think Generally speaking, that's such a, a, it's a key sign of good writing, is it doesn't matter how old you are, even if it's a picture book, if it's good writing, it's still enjoyable to read no matter what age you are. So that's a nice measuring stick and probably the biggest compliment I could give to How to Train Your Dragon as something that is absolutely worth reading. So it is 12 books long and this was published you know, in the noughties, so between uh, 2005 to 2015, roughly speaking, and they've all come out one or two years after another. So that was right during the period of time when I didn't read. Arguably, I would have been ever so slightly too old and just ever so slightly missed the window on this one, or too young. Which way around is it? I don't know. I know that this kind of landed in my childhood, but not quite as perfectly as something like Harry Potter did, for example. So whether I would have read this anyway, I'm not sure. But now I have. So one of my friends has is absolutely obsessed with How to Train a Dragon, and I'm absolutely obsessed with the film. And I knew that they weren't super similar going into reading the series, but um, actually reading it now and, and having watched the films many times, I know that they are completely different. So there are lots of things and elements in the series that are similar, um, that you can see where they've taken things from. But on the whole, there's been like a lot of creative license going on here to reshape the films for an older audience. And I think to, also just the way that Cressida Cal writes, I think is best done as written and maybe not as on film. Film. If you've read them, then let me know if you think that that's true. So I've watched all the films and I've also watched the main mini TV series, which is like seven seasons long, lots of short episodes, highly recommend. The animation quality is much worse than the films, obviously, but I was obsessed. So going through this was amazing because I have such emotional attachment to these characters regardless. Now, I first started these last year. I've been, I've read most of them in the last few weeks, but the, the first maybe four, I read sort of a bit further back last year. I started with the f it's really tricky trying not to let these all fall over. Maybe we'll go back to stacking that. So the first three books are pretty slim and I did these on audio audiobook because they're narrated by David Tennant who's one of my favourite actors slash people in the whole wide world um, and they're very slim so they've got like an omnibus edition available on, on Audible where he reads all three of these in like one audiobook sort of thing. So that was how I started with them and I'm really glad I did it that way. These first three which is How to Train Your Dragon, how to be a pirate and how to speak dragonese. These are the youngest ones and some of the skinniest books in the series. And it probably took maybe all three of these and maybe even book four before I really decided whether I felt that this was a good read to do at my age. These three are very young, they're very short and they're really fun and but there's also like an element of trying to reorientate yourself to the fact that this is very different and Hiccup's a really different age to what is happening in the films. That was really like discombobulating basically to start with and then once I got used to it it got better and easier and it felt that there were more similarities later in the series than there are at the beginning. So they're all individual adventure stories that seemingly don't have a lot of connection but they're constantly referred back to like to and fro. You don't have to read these in order but it is um, I would say I would recommend reading them in order just because there's so much interconnectedness through the series. You could probably read the first six in whichever order you wanted but from six onward I would read those back like back to back in order sort of thing because the the, the follow through of the story is much stronger at the end of the series. So I think I rated these you know around the three the four star mark and I was kind of going oh well, they're okay but I thought they were going to be better than that. The book four is How to Cheat a Dragon's Curse and I did like this and I like this more but it really by the time that I got to How to Twist a Dragon's Tail 
that's when I got sold and like every book onwards pretty much from there was just an absolute winner for me and of course as you may have seen from book six onwards I've just, just powered through these like back to back um, unashamedly and have ignored every other life duty until I finish the story. There is just something very wholesome about these books I find. They're very very satisfying, they're super fun to get through and there's something that's just really light and easy to read. There are illustrations throughout all of them, they're kind of you know varying size um, whether they take up a whole page or they're just a little bit on something. The whole way through the whole series it's like that, there's loads of illustrations. And because there's minimal text in that sense, um, you, you get the satisfaction of going through them quite quickly, which gives you a lot of motivation to keep getting through the series. My favourite in the series would probably be... I think there's two, like How to Ride a Dragon Storm and How to Betray a Dragon's Hero, I think some of my favourite. I got... I surprised myself by how emotionally attached I got to the series. I mean, you're obviously spending a really long time with Hiccup, and if you're also massively into this, like the book, the TV series and the movies, then you've probably spent, honestly, quite a lot of time with these characters. But book 11 really had me. There's some really, really like mature things happening in here that had me sobbing. I cried my way through this book, more so than I even did on the very final one. Uh, but this one, this one just holds my heart. This absolutely destroyed me, this book, and I was very upset with certain things that happened. Book 12 is a beast. So this is 500 pages long, which is pretty hefty for a middle grade fiction. I would say these are pegged at being between 9 to 12 years old, that kind of age group. But again, still really easy to get through and had a really wonderful ending. I think the thing that Cressida Cowell does really well is throughout all of these, in more subtle ways as they get older, is there are real great like really great life lessons interwoven into them. Particularly in like the middle chunk of them it's quite obvious the message that she's giving for younger readers going through and following Hiccup's story without breaking the whimsy or being preachy there's really obvious messages about friendship, about loyalty to others and yourself and family and j just growing up lessons and I think that that was really beautifully done. Hiccup is like your unlikely hero who's deeply relatable and has everything pitted against him. There's a really lovely saying that sort of follows through this series that goes if it doesn't end well then it isn't the end and I really like that. I think there's some lovely life messages in here that are, you know even at my age I'm going to take to heart. It's got me really excited for her new series, uh, which is Which Way to Anywhere, and I read that one at the beginning of, well, er, well, end of last year, and I found it okay, but knowing the sort of journey I've gone on with these books now, and knowing that I've sort of grown with the characters and got used to them, I'm really looking forward to seeing what she does with this new series. So, yes, ultimately, I would say that these are absolutely worth reading, no matter what age you're at, there's something to take away from them. Whether you can take something from the life messages in them, or whether it's simply the sheer joy and delight of reading them. And I think that there was still, as an adult reading them, a few extra things that you can take away from it that, you know, would go over kids' heads, much like watching a Disney movie. And so there's lots of little things that you can pick up and read into that she doesn't even try to over explain, she just trusts that the reader can interpret, uh, particularly when it comes to like romance or relationships between characters. I thought Stoic's character was hilariously portrayed in these books. And I also thought the portrayal of um, Valorama, which is Hiccup's mum, was very well done and quite interesting as well. So those are my thoughts. Having now finished the 12 book series, which is How to Train Your Dragon, it was deeply satisfying to do. I rated all of these very highly. They got better as they went along. They were so fun, not repetitive, really exciting to piece all the puzzle pieces together when you get to the end of the book and everything that's happened is really important. It was a really great kind of representation of how all the different struggles and trials in life and all the different challenges that you face when you get further down the track and can look back, it's really easy to then reflect on how important and how character building all those things were and how you can't have successes in life really without the downs that you've conquered beforehand. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read these, if you're planning to, let me know if you're a mega fan. I think I need to go and get some more merchandise now or maybe a t-shirt maybe a because I'm obsessed. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. And other than that, I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye. Or, all the glory of